All right, welcome to today's lecture. My name is Hamte Chanda. And then this topic is uh, SADS. This is Mathematics 111. Yeah, so we look at the definition of SADS. So I, uh, I decided to define SADS uh, mathematically just by showing you the symbol, the formula for SADS. Uh, this is the symbol for all sides here. Yeah. So some of you, you call them roots, but in the actual sense, they are not roots. Mathematically, uh, that is a wrong statement. These are not roots. They are actually sides. So you are going to see roots when we, when we start dealing with quadratic functions. That's when you know what a root is. Okay. Yeah. So let us directly go into practical examples. Let us now look at uh, examples of SADS. Yeah. So you, in most cases, you find this question which says simplify the following and you'll be given such questions. But for you guys, I don't think you can find that question in an exam. So this is just a matter of revision. I just want us to revise. Just want you to know what it means when you have yeah when you have uh, let me just see where the case is oh sorry <coughs> yeah sorry sorry I have a cough today yeah so i'll say this is just uh, a revision i want us to revise i want you to know uh what it means when you are multiplying two sides when you're dividing two thirds, mm -hmm. and then when you when a third is raised to a certain power. Okay. So we begin with this one. I just want us to go through this topic as quickly as possible. Maybe in 20 minutes time we should be done. Yeah, so that you also have something else to do. But remember there's an exercise at the end of this uh, slide and you, you need to answer it. So when you're multiplying two thirds, with the same nth value here, you can see this n with the same n value there. Uh, so x here can be different. You can have x and then multiplied by there is y inside there. As long as the n is just the same. As long as the n is just the same, uh, you have, as long as the n is just the same there, you can multiply them there's no problem. You can multiply what is inside the, the what the root. Yeah, what is under the root there. So, as you can see here, what I'm trying to say is, uh, when you add, when you're multiplying or dividing roots, you just uh, with the same value of n, you just uh, multiply or divide uh, the numbers which are under the root. So here you can multiply this two times eight there. So I'm going to have sixteen under the root there. So I'm, I'm showing you these simple, simple things, or I'm trying to remind you about these simple, simple things, because these are the ones that you need. They are very important where we're going. So if you don't know this, you find mathematics difficult, more especially on indices, yeah, even on quadratic functions. Mm -hmm. If you don't know such simple things, or if you've forgotten such simple principles, it will be very difficult for you to solve those. Yeah, including calculus and uh, some other things. So the square root of 16, we all know to say it's four. Yeah, same applies to this. So when you're dividing this, when you're dividing two sides with the same value of n, you can divide this, the root of two into the root of eight there. You have, you write your root like that. So meaning this two into eight there, you have four. Then the square root of four there, you get two. So these questions are just, these questions are just as simple as that. So now this question here, the last one. So this one simply means you are, you are multiplying the root of two, three times. A lot of people make mistakes when they see this power here, they begin to do it. They just say three times that root of two there. So it's the same as saying maybe two to the power three. Some people will say 
This 2 to the power 3, you just say 2 times 3 and get 6 as the answer. This is wrong. 2 to the power 3 simply means you are multiplying this 2 times 2. So you, you, this 2 is multiplying itself 3 times. So if we have such an uh, expression, this means that you are multiplying this root 2 3 times. So root 2 times root 2 times root 2. Yes. So now when you multiply these three root two times these two root two times root two, you simply get two. How? When you multiply root two times root two, we said you multiply what is inside. So two times two there, you get four. The square root of four, you get two. And then you multiply it with this other uh, root two here, you get two root two. So this is the solution for this question there. Okay, let us proceed. Let us see other things that we have. Wow. You can also be told to say, rationalize this one. I know somebody may ask themselves to say, why can't you leave this? Uh, or if you have a, a, an answer, and then you find it in this form. Most markers, more especially those who know mathematics properly, if you leave your answer like this, they will mark you wrong. You have to, uh, you have to do what? You have to simplify it further. So you have one over the root, the root of three. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply with the special one. It's called a special one. Why do we call it a special one? Because this root three, you multiply it, the numerator and the denominator by root three. Yeah. So when you divide the root three into root three, you get one. One times this is just the, the same as adding nothing to one over root three there. So when you multiply one times root three there, you're getting the root of three. Then over root three times root three, you are getting three. So when you leave it like this, the marker will mark you like that, yeah. <coughs> and you get two marks on that question. So we proceed. Let us now do this one. This one, you also do the same way I've done that one on top. Uh, what do I mean by saying the same way? So this one, you are also going to multiply this by the special one there, which is the root of two over the root of two. So you multiply the root of two times the root of two there, you get uh, two. Then you multiply the root of two times one there. Or if you want, you can say the root of two. Yeah, for simplicity sake, let me just write it like this times the root of eight. So the root of two times one there, you get the same root two the root of two times negative root eight, you get negative root. You remember what I said, when you're multiplying two roots, then you multiply what is under the root there. So two times eight, you get 16 over two. So you can simplify this further by saying, uh, by writing it as root two minus the root of 16 is four then over two. So even this one can be simplified if you want. That is if you want. You can say one over two. Yeah, let me write this two properly. You say one over two root two. And then you say minus two into four, you get two like that. So that is the simplest way you can write that question. All right, let us now look at the last question here. Saying um, three over one plus the root of two. So if you find, if you're solving a question and then you end up having something like this as your answer, 
This simply implies that you have not finished. It's telling you to say you, you do not need to leave anything here with a root as your denominator. So how do you get rid of this root two now? Let us see how. Let us see how. One plus the root of two. You do the same way. You multiply it with the denominator there. But in this case, since there is a sign here in between, you don't multiply with the same thing again. You change the sign in between here. And that is called a conjugate. So in other words, you multiply everything that you've been given with the conjugate of the denominator. So this is what you're going to have. You're going to have uh, one minus, we change the sign there, one minus the root of two over one minus the root of two. So when you multiply this, you're going to have three times one there. It gives you three. Three times negative root, uh, negative root two. You have three root two. And then over, you write your over like that. So when you multiply this one plus, let me just write them here. One plus root two in brackets, then you are going to have one minus root two in brackets. So here, you can see the denominator that we have here is the difference of two squares. And then those that know well mathematics, you can agree with me that when you're dealing with the difference of two squares, it's just a matter of squaring the yeah, it's, a, it's just a matter of squaring the first number there which you have been given. So in this case, you have been given one as the first number. And then you say minus, you also square the second number there. So meaning we're squaring the root of two. Like that. And then on top there, we will remain with the same thing. Minus three root two. Yeah, so this question is not complete. Let us finish it up. So for those who are doubting here, you can still multiply this one times one, there is two times, you multiply this, this one by everything in these brackets. You also multiply the root of two with everything in the brackets. So when you simplify that, you're going to have three minus three root two over so this one squared, you still get one minus the root of two squared, you get two. So in subtract that, you're going to have uh, three minus three root two, then over negative one. One minus two gives you negative one. So when you divide this negative one into three there, you get negative three. Negative one into negative three root two, you get positive three root two. So this is how you solve such questions. So this is the simplest way you can write that question. So this thing, instead of leaving it like this, you have to leave it like this when you're answering the question. All right. Yeah, so I'm sure I don't know if you have questions because rationalizing denominators of uh, uh, SADS, this is, this is uh, what you have learned is actually the whole topic of SADS. Yeah, that's the reason why I just decided to pick some questions, uh, different questions so that you may understand what it means when we say rationalize or simplify. <coughs> All right, so there's an exercise here so this exercise is based on uh, functions because on functions I didn't give you any exercise based on both functions and uh, sets. So there's just one question on sets there and I, but I think when sending I may add one or two questions there. Yeah, because the, because the weekend is long, you need to have something to be doing at least. All right, so thank you very much for, yeah, for attending the lesson.
Thank you very much. And uh, make sure that you don't miss the next lesson that are happening on Monday because a lot of people face challenges when it comes to quadratic functions and even sketching the graphs of uh, absolute value functions and uh, sketching the, gra the graph of SADS. Yeah, actually after doing these SADS now, we're going to sketch now in functions. Yeah, we're going to be sketching the functions that involve SADS. And then we're going to be sketching the, the what? The absolute value functions. Then after that, we'll do quadratic functions. Then we are done with functions. Yeah, then we start logarithms in exponentials. All right, thank you very much for watching the lecture. And then for those who have not yet subscribed to the channel, you may, you, you should subscribe, make sure that you subscribe because uh, there are some of uh, simple, okay, there are some people who ask private questions. And then what I do is I'll solve that question and I'll post, instead of maybe sending the video, sometimes the videos are too big to be sent on WhatsApp. So what I do is I, I'll just post it on, uh, YouTube so that, yeah, I'll just post it on YouTube and I'll send it, and I'll send the link to that particular person. So if you have subscribed to the channel, it, uh, it is going to show, it is going to bring a text to say, uh, University Mathematics has posted something on the website. So you'll be able to access that, you'll be able to know and see what I've posted. And it, and by God's grace, you might discover that it's helpful. It will help you in one way or the other. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching. Let's meet on Monday. And I'll send this slide and together with the, with the link for this video so that you may have time to go through the exercise, solve it and answer. And please, those guys that have not yet submitted their work on... Um, on, on the previous topic that we had. Yeah, so make sure that you submit together with this one. Shalom, shalom.